Hey what's going on guys, welcome to your fourth CSS Grid tutorial and in this video I want to talk about column and row lines. Okay now so far when we've been making a grid we've defined our columns, in this case there's three columns and we have nine elements inside this grid. So these nine div elements right here. And the default behavior of this grid is to assign these elements in order to the positions on the grid. So the first element, the first div, is assigned to the first row and the first column, then the second one, then the third, and because there's only three columns, we go on to the next row. So then the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, etc. So this is the default behavior. It's automatically assigning elements to positions on the grid in order. Now, I want to introduce you to something called grid lines, which help us to define positions on a grid, which is then going to be able to help us place elements in whatever section of the grid that we want, not necessarily in order. For example, I could take this first block right here and I could place it in this position instead by using these grid lines. All right, so imagine we make this grid using CSS and it has eight columns, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and seven rows going down. Now, when it comes to grid lines, they go in both directions, the column direction and also the row direction. So in both cases, the first line starts on the very left or the very top. So for columns, the very left starts with one, that's the column number, and goes all the way to the very end after the final column, which is nine. Now, I said there were eight columns, but there's nine column lines. And that's a general rule of thumb. If you have X amount of columns, you have X plus one amount of lines. And that's because we have the very end ones, which add an extra line, if you like. And the same goes for the rows. It starts with one at the very top and goes all the way down to eight at the very bottom. So if you have X amount of rows, you have X plus one amount of row lines. So the idea is that we use these column and row lines to determine where to place our elements in the grid. So I could have a div element within inside the grid and I want to place it here, for example. So starting at this point, going all the way over here, down here, down here, like a box, taking up these nine different squares, right? Now, if I want to place it there, then the default behavior of CSS grid won't work because it'll place it up here if it's the first element, here if it's the second, etc. So I need to override that and use these column and grid lines to do it. So if we're starting the element here, the top left, what we'd say is we want the element to start at this column line right here, number three, and it goes all the way to six, this column line right here. So we're telling that to CSS Grid. We're saying this is where we want our element to be placed in terms of columns. Then we do the same thing for rows. We say, well, we want the element to be positioned at the start of this line right here, number two, for the rows, and go all the way down to row number five, this column, uh, this row line right here. All right, then we end up with something like this. Our element is placed there. So let's take a look at how we can do this in the code. All right then, so in my index file now, I still have this div with an ID of content, which is gonna serve as our grid wrapper. Then instead of nine elements inside, I have six now. And each one has a class one, two, three, four, five, and six. This is so we can style them separately from one another. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is define our grid and say how many columns and how many rows that we want. Because at the minute, even though we're displaying as grid, this is displaying as one element stacked on top of each other. We don't have any columns defined yet. So let's define the columns first of all. And to do that, I'm going to use the property grid-template-columns. Now, I want to have six columns and I want every single uh, column to be the same width. So I'm going to use the repeat function to do it. I want something to repeat six times and I want to repeat one FR. So each column is going to be one fraction. So if I save this now, we can see each of these elements is lined up inside a column, right? That's the default behavior. Now at the minute we only have one row, but what I want to do is create four rows, right? So then I can distribute my content over these four rows and these six columns. So to do that, I'm going to come underneath this and say grid hyphen template hyphen rows. This time I want to repeat four times because we're going to have four rows and I want to use the min max function right here because I want each row to have a minimum height, but then give a maximum height of auto if there's content within it. So I'm going to say 150 pixels comma auto, right? So now we have our rows and our columns defined and we can see that row take on the height of 150 pixels right there. 
Cool, so now we've done that, we can go about placing our different elements, one through six, in these different areas on the grid. Because right now, even though we can only see one row and six columns, we actually have four rows and six columns. So we can place these elements anywhere within each of these cells, if you like. All right, so then let's do number one first of all. I'm gonna come underneath these styles and say class one. Then inside, I'm gonna use a property called grid hyphen column hyphen start. Now, this property is gonna say, where do we want to start this element, this div? At what column line do we want to start it at? Do we wanna start it at column line one right here? Or do we wanna start it at column line three up here somewhere? Well, I just wanna start it at column line one. So that is gonna start this element at the first line on the very edge of the grid over here. Now, I'm gonna use another property, grid hyphen column hyphen end to say, where do I want this element to end? At what grid line? So it can span, if it wants, three columns all the way up here, or two columns, or four columns. It's up to you. Where do we want this element to end? Well, I'm gonna say grid line three, which is right about here. Remember, one is on the very left, two, three. So I'm gonna use grid line three to end this element. So if I save this now, we'll take a look here. We can see it starts at line one and it ends at line three. That's pretty cool, right? Now, I've used two different properties right here, but I can combine these into one property if I wish. So I'll just comment this dude out right now. And then underneath, instead of writing those two properties separately, I'm just gonna say grid hyphen column. Then I can type in two numbers. One is where I want to start. Then I do a forward slash, then I do a three. And we need that forward slash in the middle. This forward slash means, okay, we're done with the starting position. Now I wanna move on to the end position. So start position, forward slash, end position, right? So this is the same as writing these two columns out separately. So if we save this now and view it over here, we can see exactly the same behavior. It starts at column one and it ends at column line three. All right, so let's go on to the second element. We'll do class two down here, and I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing. I'm gonna say grid hyphen column. Instead of using the two separate properties, we're just gonna use grid hyphen column. And I want this to start at line three, where the other one ended. So we're gonna start right about here, and I wanna end this all the way over at line seven, which is gonna be the very end. Remember, we stated we wanted six columns, which means there's six plus one column lines. So it's gonna end right at the very end over here on the right. So if I save this now, we can see that in a browser. We have one over there and two over here. Awesome, so now we're placing elements where we want on this grid really easily. All right, so let's move on to the third one, which is this element. I'm gonna come down here and say class three, and inside I'm gonna do something slightly different. First of all, I'm gonna say grid hyphen column is gonna be one to four. So I'm saying right here, I wanna start at the very start over here and go all the way up to the fourth line, which is right about here. One, two, three, four, right? Now, if I save this, oops, not this, save this and view it in a browser, we can see that it takes up these spaces right here and it goes to uh, line four over there. Now, what if I want to place this somewhere else in terms of rows? So not just columns, but also rows. Imagine I want this to take up not just one row in height, but maybe two rows in height, so down here as well. Well, I can do that. I can use the same kind of technique. I can say grid hyphen row instead of grid column and say where I want this to start. Now, I want this to start at line two. Remember, one is at the top, then two is down here. So I want it to start here still, but this time I want to take it to line four. So three is here, four is here. So it's going to end up down here. So I'll say grid row is gonna be two to four, right? So it starts at row two and ends at row line four. So save that and view it in a browser. Now we can see it takes up that space right here. So this is really awesome. We're essentially telling CSS Grid exactly where we want our elements to start and finish on this grid. And it's gonna offer us a lot of flexibility. So let's just finish this up. I'm gonna go down here and say four. And this time what I'm gonna say is grid hyphen column and we're going to start it off at four which is where the number three ended and we're going to take it all the way to the end which is seven 
And for grid row, I'm going to say also I want two to four, so the same height. So let's save that and view it. And now we can see this one over here. Now we just need five and six. So we'll do number five first of all. And we'll say grid hyphen column is going to go this time, not from one. So we don't want to start it over here. This time I want to start it from somewhere over here, right? And we could do that. We don't have to do it in order. It doesn't have to start at the left. We can start it over here if we want. So I'll say I want this time to start at column line three and end at seven and save that. And we can view that right now. It starts here and ends over here. Now, at the minute, this number six is getting pushed onto the next line down, the next row, because it was here originally. So this five, the fact that it goes to the end means it's pushed this down to the row below. But what I want to do is actually have this block right here. And we can do that easily, say we want to start this element at this uh, row line and end it at this row line. All right. So let's style this last one, number six. And inside I'm gonna say grid hyphen row is gonna be four, right? So one, two, three, midway between this, four. We want it to start right here and go down. So if I save this now, you're gonna see it start over here, which is awesome. It's moved back up, even though it's pushed down onto the next row. Then we wanna end it over here. So we need to do grid hyphen column as well. So grid hyphen column is going to be one to three. So save that. Now we have it starting at one, two, ending at three. All right. So there we go. That is how we use these grid lines and these two properties, grid hyphen column and grid hyphen row to place these elements right here, wherever we want on this grid. That is freaking awesome.